Decision to develop a proposal. Hi, I'm Bill Carmody. What makes up a decision to develop a proposal in the first place? Think about it for a minute. Developing a proposal costs you time and money. Whether you're actually spending available resources on developing a proposal that you could be using to execute a different project. So why do them at all? When you're thinking about the decision to actually respond to and put a proposal together, what you wanna do is you wanna know that your team has exactly what's needed for a particular project. When you decide to put a proposal together, you're identifying this is a key important problem that can be solved by the resources we have. And when you identify that this is a great problem for our resources to be utilized for, then you can actually put together your story and say, I have a clear understanding of the problem. We have a great solution that ideally we've already done a few times, and we know exactly how to support you for this much money and this much time. And if you can really build a quality product using the available resources, then this is something that's going to be exciting because you can come with confidence to the person that's asking for the proposal. Now, when you don't want to submit a proposal is when it's going to be a long, arduous process, especially if it's something that you haven't done before. Because what you're doing is you have a long shot and probably not going to be able to get uh, success. So instead, what you want to do is you want to look for the opportunities to build proposals that are in your sweet spot, the things that you do best in the world, and you're developing relationships. The interesting thing about anyone who's asking you to submit a proposal is they think that you're on a short list. They think you're someone that they would like to be able to work with. Having the conversation up front about why you were selected to be requested to put a proposal together can give you insights as to whether or not they're just trying to do a cost-cutting measure against their preferred vendor or whether there's actually a legitimate opportunity for you to, to win. And so you might wanna ask some of those questions up front and don't be afraid. You're not here to offend anyone, but you wanna know what would it take it for a company like ours to win this bid and really have them tell you what they're looking for and get past what's on paper, get into the emotional connections. What are the things that they really wanna see and why you, why now? And then from that, if you really feel like there's a good opportunity here, you wanna present it and you wanna be able to come back. And more importantly, you wanna know even if you don't win, your request is, I'm happy to submit a proposal as long as you can give me feedback if, I, if you choose not to work with us. If you're willing to give me that feedback, I'm willing to put in the work to put the proposal together. The key here is you're not going to win every proposal. You want to really narrow the number of proposals you write every year because that's taking a lot of your time and energy. And instead, work on the proposals that you have a really high propensity to win. And how do you know? You keep evaluating your win ratios. You keep looking at how many we submitted and how many actually we've won. And that will help you keep getting better. So you're saying no to proposals that don't make sense. And you're saying yes to the ones that are more in your sweet spot and you have a higher propensity to win.